Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome back to the channel. Well, today we've got the last of our three Star Trek Strange New Worlds trailers to have a look at. We've got the Pike trailer to have a look at, we've got the number one or or Una trailer to look at, and we've got the Spock trailer to look at. The, the, these Strange New Worlds trailers have been dropping every day since uh, I think about Wednesday of last week, so it's yeah, so I've been hard to keep up with them all. And we've only got about a month to go before Strange New Worlds hits our TVs for the very first time. And I'm sure you guys, as well as myself, is really looking forward to this new Star Trek series. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to Cyphernetics yet, please click on that big red button to stay up to date and current with all the latest Star Trek news on YouTube. Uh, and first of all, we're going to have a look at the Pike trailer, break that down shot by shot, then do number one, Una, and, uh, and then finish off with Spock. So let's get into that. Unauthorized trips in a non-Federation space. Someone's playing fast and loose with the rules today. I know me, the Boy Scouts. I know exactly how and when my life ends. Knowledge of death is vital for effective leadership. You can't stop seeing it. Would make me hesitant. How will it live in me? So first off, we get to see a bit more about the transporter room here on uh, on the Enterprise. Uh, again, it's very much in keeping with the rest of the ship. A lot of whites, a lot of blacks and greys and so forth. I'm digging it. I, I like the, the look and design for the uh, new Enterprise. I think, if anything, it kind of reminds me a little bit more of the Star Trek motion picture sets and so forth for the Enterprise. So I think that they've got, taken a good page out of that book but combined it with original series to come up with something which I think is quite a nice in-between middle ground. One story point point which seems to be uh, going to be quite prominent in Strange New Worlds is the fact of Pike's impending demise. We obviously saw a bit of a flash to that in the Discovery Season 2 episode where he was looking at the time crystals on that Klingon planet and he got a images in his mind about how he was going to end up in the wheelchair, you know, you know, mutilated and, uh, and unable to communicate apart from beeps for yes and no. Uh, and obviously what he saw in those uh, time crystals or whatever uh, is going to be playing on his mind quite a bit in, uh, in Strange New Worlds. And we've also got him sort of seeing himself in reflections of, you know, uh, control panels and so forth. So it's going to be interesting to see how this impacts upon his command style. When uh, when you know how you're going to die, how does this affect your judgment? Do you become more reckless in terms of going out there on leading away missions and so forth because you know you're not going to die until eight years down the road? Do you become more cavalier? I'd be interested to see how this affects Pike's command decisions and, uh, and style. We see Pike uh, leading a briefing here in what appears to be uh, some kind of cargo bay on board the Enterprise. Uh, addressing the troops, so to speak. We've got some nice floral arrangements. Actually, from the looks of it, there's a couple in the front row, and, and one of the couple there seems to be potentially holding some flowers. And based on the other floral arrangements we've got going on here, I wonder whether Pike's conducting a, a wedding of some kind here uh, in the cargo bay. Because I wouldn't think you'd have these uh, sort of floral arrangements and everything going on there if it wasn't, you know, if it was just a, a regular briefing. It could be a wedding he's conducting. We will see. We've got our away team here beaming into a, a warehouse of some kind, a lot of crates and boxes and everything. Can't read any of the signage in the background here to imply uh, what race or or what these um, uh, cargo supplies and so forth could be. It's certainly a very sort of industrial and sort of somewhat used facility. We get another shot here of our uh, mystery ship attacking the Enterprise. We've seen the ship a couple of times before in previous trailers uh, with this uh, tri-wing design. Uh, doesn't ring any particular bells. I think I, I commented in one of my previous Strange New World videos. The only three-winged ship I can kind of remember is one of the Zindi uh, ships, I think, was sort of a, a, a tri-wing configuration. But um, yeah, I'm interested to see what race this ship ends up being from. I get a sense that our crew is going to be very casual in Strange New Worlds. We've got lots of sets where they're just sort of chilling, having drinks, kicking back on a couch somewhere, and, you know, um, very kind of moody, almost restaurant style lighting in a lot of situations. So it kind of feels very casual, not too formal at all. It seems like the crew's going to be hanging out in Pike's quarters quite a lot, uh, just sort of, you know, having some drinks. Maybe Pike's going to be using the kitchen, cooking up some meals. It, it doesn't seem like a, a formal command structure that he's got going on here. It seems it does seem very casual. Okay, so let's have a look at our second trailer for today. We've got the uh, the trailer for for. Una, number one. Uh, let's take a look and uh, see what she's all about. All I ever wanted since I first saw the stars was to join Starfleet. 
You're the best first officer in the fleet. You're an example to all of us. As a senior officer, I don't get to be part of the crew anymore. Oh, no, that's not because you're a senior officer. It's because you terrify people. <laughs> Battle station! Security breach at airlock four. Who's backup? I'm your backup. You're fun. Looking at our set here for the um, what looks like the mess hall or the lounge or whatever, there's a definitely a 60s aesthetic here, which I think works really nicely in terms of tying this series into that um, time frame that was the 1960s that original Star Trek came from. But it's all obviously looks very good. It's, it's it's very updated. The mess hall here, it looks like a very trendy 1960s jazz lounge or a nightclub of some kind. 60s style has creeped into our look here for Strange New Worlds. We get a look here at an interesting uh, star base of some kind or space station or an orbit of a planet. It doesn't look like it's a Federation star base or space station. It could well be. Obviously, the Federation's got many star bases and and everything uh, all over the galaxy. The general aesthetic of this one does look a little bit different to our former Federation or Starfleet star bases we've seen in the past. We get a nice big wide shot look at the bridge here now. There's, there's certainly a lot of light strips everywhere. I know as a, a cameraman and, and, and DOP myself, a lot of times the DOP will ask the production designer to build in lighting to the set so they don't sort of need to rig as many lights or whatever, which you know obviously helps with efficiency during your shooting day where you don't have to kind of move as many lights around you can kind of just kind of the lights are kind of built into the set design and there's certainly no shortage of them here we've got light strips everywhere I'm surprised the actors can perform their lines without needing sunglasses there's so many light strips everywhere on every single console in the bridge and I think if you if you put too many of them I think it kind of becomes a bit obvious in this sense maybe maybe that's just just me looking at it because my background is as a, a cameraman and, and director of photography so I kind of just look at all these lights around the set and go oh yeah the DPs asked the production designer to, to build all of those in so that it's uh, you know helps with the economy of the uh, shooting day and so forth. Got another shot here of one of our big white hallways. The, <laughs> the hallways uh, yeah they look I, I like the look at them as I said in a previous video they do remind me of the the uh, hallways from the Star Wars Corellian Corvette or Blockade Runner, uh, just so much white everywhere. But I'm sure we'll get, you know, a, a, there's a lot of going to be a lot of splashes of colour in uh, in the uniforms. Every person, an extra who walks down the hallway in, you know, in uh, gold or red or blue is going to add that splash of colour. So we've, it doesn't necessarily matter that we've got very monochromatic sets, I guess, because our colour comes from the costumes. Now looking at these couple of shots here, it looks like number one has been possessed by some alien life form or something. She's got this red glow happening on her chest. In this shot, like she's got some sort of alien entity inside of her. And if we look at this wider shot here, we also see that she's got, um, you know, a, a glow going on and there's some sort of distortion happening with her face a little bit there in this shot. So I'm guessing in this particular episode, uh, number one gets uh, gets taken over by some alien life form or something to that effect. Got another Another ominous shot here of a uh, mystery ship coming out from behind some clouds uh, probably to attack the Enterprise and it looks like we've got some aliens or pirates of some description having boarded the Enterprise and uh, our uh, our bridge crew are having a bit of a pew pew fight <laughs> with uh, with some enemy combatants who've uh, who've boarded the ship. Alrighty, so now let's take a look at the third and final of our uh, character trailers for Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Let's have a look and see all about Spock. Emotion is logical. Knowledge is vital. We have less than one hour before combat impact. You do a lot of reminding people of deadlines, sir. She does have a point, Spock. On my world, I was forced to prove out long. In Starfleet, I am accepted for who I am. Half human, half Falcon. I am, quite simply, Spock. It looks like we get some scenes on Vulcan here involving Spock. We've got Spock sitting here. Um, now, I'm guessing this other Vulcan character is T'Pring, which I believe was his um, wife or the, you know, the arranged marriage or whatever that was set up for him prior to original series, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but it looks like going by a couple of the shots in this trailer, 
Spock has got a bit of relationship going on, stuff going on. We saw in the Nurse Chapel trailer uh, the other day that uh, it seems like there was a little bit of a something there between these two. We've got Spock on Vulcan Homeworld with uh, a Vulcan here, and we've even got another s scene with a Vulcan with Spock uh, getting a bit passionate. In, I don't think we tend to, to see too much Vulcan kissing going on. I think in the past we've seen um, the little, uh, you know, little finger finger touchy thing going on, but. Um, <laughs> But we don't tend to see Vulcans going the uh, the full makeout session, which is kind of uh, you know um, a bit uncharacteristic. So it definitely seems like Spock's uh, you know getting a little bit of action here in Strange New Worlds. We see in the background of Spock's quarters here the the, uh, the sort of uh, diamond shaped uh, Vulcan instrument with the bells that you shake. I think we saw this back in one of the other original series episodes. Vulcans shaking these uh, these uh, I don't know ceremonial instruments. It's good that they've kept a few of the props and everything uh, consistent with uh, what we've seen in original series. Not to mention our Vulcan um, ceremonial weapons with the half moon shaped blade on one end and the uh, and the rounded club on the other. Obviously these were used uh, in that mock time episode where Kirk had to fight Spock and in the Vulcan arena or whatever. So yeah it looks like we're seeing some of that action again. Going by this asteroid uh, impending collision with a planet it seems like one of our episodes is going to be involved around uh, rescuing a uh, an alien world world from destruction from an asteroid. I think w w that happened once or twice before on an original series, but it looks like the Enterprise is, uh, is doing it again in this in this show. And it seems going by this shot that uh, Spock isn't completely free of emotions like he is in original series. Maybe in this younger form that he's in, he's obviously a few years you know younger in uh, Strange New Worlds than he was in original series. Uh, and maybe his uh, emotions aren't quite as in check. Uh, having that half human, half Vulcan side, uh, maybe we're going to see some uh, more outbursts from him. Maybe he's not going to be quite as controlled and restrained as he was in the original series. Guys, I'm really looking forward to Star Trek Strange New Worlds. We've certainly had no shortage of trailers <laughs> drop over the course of the last week. I think we've had one trailer a day uh, drop uh, for about the last you know, five or six days or something to that effect. So um, there's been, yeah, there's been so much Star Trek Strange New Worlds, uh, you know, sneak peeks uh, in the form of these trailers coming lately. And, you know, I haven't seen anything I haven't liked. I think it all looks visually amazing. Uh, and we've only got a month or so to go before it hits our TV screen. So it, uh, it starts on May 5th, which is in fact the same day as our uh, season finale for Star Trek Picard. So Star Trek Picard season finale and Star Trek Strange New Worlds will both air on the same uh, day. And then obviously we'll have um, Strange New Worlds continuing uh, after that. Uh, for another you know 10 episode run guys leave your thoughts in the comment section uh, what you thought about the Pike trailer what you thought about the number one trailer and also what you thought about the Spock trailer uh, leave the super thanks please if you're able to it really helps the channel out much appreciated guys uh, I'm tuning out these videos you know one a day at the moment so there's certainly tons of work going into the channel so you really appreciate your support uh, if, if you can't just like and comment it helps the algorithm you know and all that sort of thing um, and subscribe if you haven't already done so uh, check out merch in the merch store where you can pick up all my t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, caps, everything. They're 20% off until the 4th of April. So you've got only uh, another day or two at the most to take advantage of that. Um, and I'll see you guys again soon for my next video. See you then.